Welcome to Andy's Garage, I'm Andy Phillips. Today we're gonna to be replacing the catalytic converters on this Chevy Trailblazer behind me. Now this is the 5.3 liter V8. It's also the EXT, the extended one. Let's go ahead and get started. You are going to need to get the vehicle up in the air so you can get access to everything. I am using these Rhino ramps. If you wanna see a product review I did for them, you can check it out via the link above. I'll also have it down in the description. But I don't wanna rely strictly on the ramp. So as we can see, I also have jack stands on both sides supporting that as well. And if we move along here to the back, always wanna make sure that you also chalk the wheels. You don't wanna run the risk of this thing rolling back or dropping on you when you're underneath. Now that we've gone over the safety of getting under the vehicle with it up in the air, let's head underneath and I'm just gonna show you what we're going to be dealing with and then we'll get started with that. If we come along here, you have your bank one, which is the driver's side. You have your bank two, which is the passenger side, where they connect to the exhaust manifold. Let's take a look and I'll show you what's up there that has to be disconnected. Here's our bank one, which is our driver's side. We have this upstream O2 sensor that has to be just removed. Looking all the way up in there, you can see where it connects. There's three 15 millimeter nuts that have to be removed at that connection point. Coming down here on the same bank, we have, let's see if I can get back there. There's a sensor right here in the back. That is our downstream sensor. We'll have to remove that. Now, sometimes it might be easier to get to that once we have it all out. If that is the case, we'll just have to disconnect that harness. Coming here onto bank two, which is the passenger side. Looking up there is our upstream sensor, same thing. That'll have to be removed. And then you can see up there our connection point. Clear that up. Right there, those are also three 15 millimeter nuts that have to be removed. And then coming here, we have a downstream sensor on this one. Right here. That one we can unscrew and just let hang. But only the one on bank one, I would recommend um, doing it once you get it out. Then coming down on this end, we have where it all merges into one pipe that connects to the exhaust pipe going down towards the muffler where it's connected there. Take a look. If we come down here, that's where it connects to the exhaust pipe going down in the muffler. Those are also two 15 millimeter nuts that have to be removed. However, let me come a little further down and show you something. Up here is our pipe where it connects right there to the exhaust pipe. In order to get this out, we have this cross member right here. We will have to remove that so we can drop everything and that's where we'll need to support the uh, transmission with a hydraulic jack so that way it doesn't drop. So here's our transmission up here. What we'll have to do, if we come underneath, you have one, two, three, four on this side. If we look at this side here, we also have one, two, three, and four 15 millimeter bolts that have to be removed. On top of that, up here, two on this side, two on the other side, you have 18 millimeter bolts with 18 millimeter nuts on the other side. We have to remove that. This is that downstream sensor on bank one, the driver's side. I would just disconnect this harness, tuck it up. When you drop all of this, then you can remove that properly, put it on the new one. The other three, you can just let hang. But this one's a little tricky to get to rather than, rather than waste time. Just disconnect it. We will have to disconnect this line here from this cross support because when we drop this, you don't want to be putting stress on this. So we'll have to pop these off. And then looking up in here, let's see. Right there. And right there, there's two 15 millimeter nuts that will have to be undone in order to drop this, but we wanna make sure that the transmission right up here is properly supported before we do that. Now that we've located everything, let me show you what's needed to complete this. First off, you're obviously gonna need your replacement catalytic converters, which come all as this assembly right here on the exhaust pipe. 
When you order it, you want to make sure that you specify it's for the 5.3 liter V8 because some Trailblazers had the smaller engine and it's a different configuration. It will not work. So you want to make sure. And in the case here, what we're working on is also the EXT. So this is an extended one. So that's also a little bit different. The pipe is longer. So you want to make sure when you're ordering it that you're ordering the correct pieces for your specific vehicle. Next, you will need either a 22 millimeter or an O2 sensor socket. That's for removing the O2 sensors because as you can see here, we have our downstream, downstream, upstream, upstream. We are gonna have to be removing those from the old pipe and then reinstalling them here. So you'll need that. I have a breaker bar here, not saying it's 100% needed, but highly recommended because some of these nuts and bolts that we're gonna be removing have been on there since the beginning. This vehicle, it's all original. So only God knows what we're gonna be running into. So it's highly recommended to have that on hand. I have an 18 millimeter socket and a 15 millimeter socket and also a ratchet. And then I do have a long extension that you're gonna to need to get up in there to get to where we connect to the exhaust manifold. And then last, I do have an hydro, a, a hydraulic jack with blocking because we are gonna to have to remove the transmission support cross member and we're gonna to have to support it with the hydraulic jack when we do that. So have that all ready to go. But these are all the pieces so we can get started. I'm going to go underneath and do all of the O2 sensors. I'm not going to show it because I don't want to waste time on this video. If you want to see a video specifically on how to do the O2 sensors on this vehicle, I'll have a link across the top also down in the description that you can check out. But I'm going to go underneath, disconnect all them, get them ready, and then we'll be back to start focusing on the catalytic converter and the exhaust pipe and getting all that removed. Both O2 sensors here on bank two, the passenger side, you can see them hanging there. They've been removed. If we turn here onto bank one, we have our upstream, which has been removed down there. See it hanging? And then for the downstream sensor, that's the one that's kind of tucked around that we saw earlier. It's way up in there. I just disconnected the harness. And if we come here on this side, you'll see it better. But you'll see where I disconnected it. It was right here, and we also popped off this harness from this support, so that way when we drop it, there's no strain on that. So now we are ready to get moving. So let's head up to the uh, two exhaust manifold connections on bank one and two, and we can start disconnecting that. Then we'll do the connection to the exhaust pipe near the muffler. Then we'll come back last and we'll put the support right here under the transmission and then drop this cross member support for the transmission and then all that will come out we'll put the new one in. We're going to start on bank one, the driver's side. Take these three 15 millimeter nuts off. They should come off without any issue except for the fact of maybe being a little bit tight and if that's the case we'll use the breaker bar but you have studs on the top end so they should stay in place. So let's go ahead and take those off and then we'll move on to the other side. I just tried with the ratchet, also with the breaker bar. Didn't want to push it too much because I don't want to break these. I'm going to apply some penetrating oil to it, let it sit a little bit, and then we'll be back. So I got these loosened and I'm removing them now. I'm just going to show you here real quick. That one's loose. That one's loose. This one, let me get a close up there, clear that up for you. That one is stripped. These things were a pain to get off. Breaker bar didn't work. Had to use an impact wrench to break them loose. The breaker bar had stripped it. I need to cut that off somehow, but we're going to take everything else off first, then we'll come back to remove that. I'm going to go up here. Get this one out. There we go. This one was uh, pretty tight. I had to break all of these on this side as well with the impact wrench breaker bar. Really wouldn't do much. This one broke off, unfortunately, so I got to replace that stud. But let's remove this one. I loosened this one with the breaker bar. There we go. 
and there's the one here on this side we'll have to punch that through and then replace that stud when we put the new exhaust pipe on right here at the flange here we go this is the last nut on this side now we're going to take all um just take them off by hand all the ones here on um bank one but i need to cut that stripped nut off first and then we can remove the transmission support drop this put the new one in this nut and that one have been completely broken loose and free i tighten them back up so this wouldn't pull on an angle this is the one that's stripped i've tried everything can't get it off so i'm gonna have to cut it off however i can't get my tool in here because of this piece right here so the next thing i am going to do is i'm going to cut this exhaust pipe right here get this out of the way so i have better access to get in there and cut the nut or the stud off so we can get this whole thing out next we need to remove there's four 15 millimeter bolts on the driver's side four on the passenger side and then once we have those done then we'll release the two 15 millimeters that are going up into the transmission mount and then we have the two 18 millimeter bolts on this side and two on the other side and then we need to put the blocking under the transmission so we can pull down this this uh, transmission support these can be on pretty tight uh, the ones on this vehicle here weren't too bad i had to use a breaker bar to break them initially loose but then now they're coming off the ratchet last one on this side next thing we're going to disconnect or remove the two 15 millimeter nuts going to the transmission mount in the middle and then we'll put the blocking under the transmission and then remove the four 18 millimeters coming along here i'll show you what we're dealing with up there is one of them Here's the other one. I've already started to loosen it. That's one. And that's the other one. So the way that I'm doing it here, I just have my breaker bar with the 18 millimeter holding the head. And then I have it. On this side, I have my ratchet with an extension, so I can, there we go, work it down. You'll need the extension to clear all these the pipes and stuff. There we go. I have the blocking in place on the hydraulic jack under the transmission. So the next thing I'm going to do is pull those bolts out now that we've loosened them, and then we can remove this support uh, cross member here so we can drop the exhaust pipes and the catalytic converters okay we have the nut removed and now i can just pull that through and i'm going to remove the other three and then we'll be back to pull that cross piece support out all the bolts have been pulled out we're going to pull this down gently there's nothing supporting this that's going to drop Pull this down. Okay, here it comes. Here it comes. Watch it. And that's it. Now we have all the access I'm going to show you in here where we can drop everything now. Looking in here, you can see where the support was. Here's our catalytic converter, the pipe running all the way back. So now we can drop it and then put the new one in. Here's where I cut the exhaust pipe. You can see where the flange is up in there. We still need to work on that, but I wanted access so I could go up in there with the extractor. But now that we have this off, we can pull this exhaust pipe out of here 
whether you have to cut it like I did or if you're removing it, if you have no issues getting the three nuts off the flange there, you want to remove the driver's side first because then you can drop it down and then it'll slide out. Separate this first from the exhaust pipe so you can maneuver it. You can see how we can move it now. We'll have to get it over this piece here so we can drop it. Coming here on the driver's side, see if I can show you. There's our O2 sensor and it's hitting that support. So I'm gonna to try to get that off so that we don't damage it. So we're gonna remove it, make it easier. There we go. Now with the O2 sensor out, this will drop. You can pull it down all the way. I slid that off to the side so we can push it back better. And if we look here, you can see it's just about the drop on this side. I was trying to remove it from the driver's side. Let's come over here real quick. And even with the O2 sensor out, we're able to get it to clear better, but the leverage is still going towards that main pipe. So by pushing the exhaust, as we saw, pushing that back to have more, more space, now we'll be able to drop it. Still trying to work this thing out with this horizontal pipe is just causing it not to clear properly. So I'm gonna have to grab my reciprocating saw and just cut that horizontal pipe. Here's how everything ended up. Just wanna show you. We have the bank two side right here. We finally got that dropped. It was getting caught up there on that little corner piece where the transmission the transmission um, support cross beam gets mounted to. It was getting caught up on there. And because of this being all one piece, I couldn't shift it enough. So rather than waste a lot of time fooling with it, I just cut the pipe right across the middle there, separating the two banks. This is bank one, that's bank two. The new one I'm putting in is already split into two pieces and then you just use an exhaust clamp or you can weld it to put it together. So that'll be easier. This one here, because it was one piece, was just being problematic. Had to cut it off here as well. Let's head underneath and I'll show you more. Up here is the bank one. And let's see if I get my hand up in here. This is our stripped nut right here that we're gonna remove with an extractor so we can get this off. But I needed to get the pipe out of the way to get access in here because it was curving in front of it. So we cut that there. And then here's the other piece where it goes into the catalytic converter that connected to the bank two, which is on right there is where I cut it off. And then you can see down on the other end, all the way down there, the flange that connects to the exhaust pipe that goes into the muffler right there. And then this is where it goes up. Let's see if I can get a shot in here for you. There's our exhaust manifold where the pipe is gonna connect to with the flange there. So we didn't have any problems on this side. It was just on the driver's side, the bank one that we had the issue. So let's pull all this piping out of here so we can extract that strip nut and get that plate off so we can start putting the new one in. Pull this out. This is the one that was on the driver's side. The way it was set up is this, this pipe cut over to the passenger side and this went up to the exhaust manifold. This is our catalytic converter here, O2 sensor ports up and downstream. Let's head over to the other side. I'll pull the other part of the pipe out. <laughs> This is the other piece. Now that we have all of this out, I'm gonna head back underneath. We're gonna get rid of that stripped nut so we can get the flange disconnected from the exhaust manifold. I'm not gonna show all this in this video. I'm just gonna get that removed and then we'll be back to take a look at how it turned out and start mounting the new one. 
Just finished removing the stripped nut, got the other two taken off. They weren't the issue though. Now we can slide this off. If you want to see a video I did showing how to remove a stripped nut uh, on the exhaust flange studs, you can check that out via the link above, also down in the description. I'll also have some other videos down there as far as removing stripped screws and nuts and re-threading and all that stuff, because these are all issues you may encounter on this journey. Those are the studs on the exhaust manifold on bank one, the driver's side. You can see the placement there. This is where the catalytic converter lays in here. The pipe goes up, connects. If we come over here onto the other side, this is our bank two, which is the passenger side, same thing. It'll connect in here, comes down, catalytic converter rests in here. And then the exhaust pipe will ride above this support here and then connect all the way back there to the tailpipe that's headed towards the muffler so now that we have all this cleared out everything is finally out of here we can grab the new pipe and start putting it in place we're going to start with this side here the bank two side because that's the one that has the biggest piece you have where it connects up there to the exhaust manifold coming down to the catalytic converter down to the muffler connection all in one piece and then here on this side this one is an easier one. This one is just the connection here, the catalytic converter. It's going to come back here and then it bridges over to connect to the other piece and we'll connect that with an exhaust clamp. So let's get that up in here so we can start reattaching that. We'll put the O2 sensors, you can see them dangling here. We'll put them back in place and then put everything back together and wrap this up. We're ready to put the new one in. I just wanted to put a side-by-side -side comparison here for you. This is obviously the one that came off. And if we see here, you can see where I cut it. On the new one going on, it's already split there because it slides in and then we use an exhaust clamp to tighten it. If you want to weld it, you can. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to clamp it in. But I'm going to start with our passenger side, which is bank two. That's the longer piece. We're going to go underneath. We're going to connect this flange here to the tailpipe uh, that goes through the muffler. We're gonna loosely tighten it, just by hand, tighten it loosely, just to really get it in place. And then we're gonna go ahead and take the this uh, bank two connection where it goes up to the exhaust manifold. We'll take those three nuts as well, hand tighten them as well. That way, when we put this one in place, we have some maneuverability. Once we have everything hand tightened and secured, then we'll come back, tighten everything up, put the O2 sensors in, and then we just have to put the transmission mount support cross beam on there, tighten that all up, and we're done. So let's take this piece underneath, and uh, I'll meet you on the other side, and we'll start putting it in place. The broken stud has been replaced. I'm just putting a bolt through it. The other one's obviously good to go. So we have the flange here. I'm going to raise it up in position, line it up, set it on those studs, and just hand tighten the nuts. And then we'll come up here on the other end and do the same at the exhaust manifold. Coming in on the passenger side, we have this piece here. Our support for the transmission mount goes up in here. This is where the two 18 millimeters go through. And then we have the four 15s that go here. You have this plate right here. We need to get the exhaust pipe to rest up here. And then it'll be able to feed all the way back down here to connect to where it goes into the muffler. So to show you what I've done, we fed that up and just pretty much just rested it there at the connection on the exhaust manifold. This is our catalytic converter right here. And then if we go this way, you can see the pipe is going across. That's kind of blurry because I'm right up on it, but it's going right up up here on top of that. And then it's working its way back. All the way back there. So now I'm just gonna hand tighten those and then we'll be back to do them up at the exhaust manifold. That's how we have it. And here's a better shot where you could see it resting right there on top of that support. And then this is where we're gonna connect the bank one side once we get that in place. But let's see if I can come past all this so you can see what's going on. And then there's the catalytic converter and where it goes up there. 
So let's head up there where it connects to the bank two exhaust manifold and we'll hand tighten those three nuts as well. So looking all the way in there, you want to position this. You'll see how it's, let's see if I can, it'll connect right up to it like that. And then now we just take that flange, line it up with the studs, bring it through and we'll hand tighten the nuts on there. I can't show it all while I'm holding the camera. So I'm going to do that and then we'll be back to look at it. Putting the last one on now, you can see we have them in place. But let's see if I can slide down here a little bit. We still have some flexibility here so we can maneuver it to connect to the other side. And then once we have everything in place, we'll be back to tighten everything up and put in the O2 sensors. Here's a shot from the wheel well. You can see better how the flange is um, getting uh, tightened up there to the exhaust manifold. We have the studs coming through and then you have the nuts bringing um, the exhaust pipe. You can see how it sleeves over and that's how it fits. Now that we have the bank two passenger side in place and loosely tighten in, let's take this one in here on bank one. Now I'm going to get a close up. You need to make sure that if you bought an aftermarket um, catalytic converter exhaust pipe, you want to make sure that the gasket is on here. If you need to take it off the old pipe or buy a new one, but I'll get a close up. Now we're ready to head underneath. We'll feed that in, make the connection. And once everything is tightened in place, then we'll put the exhaust clamp on it. I'm going to slide this up in here. And then once we get it in place, then we'll make that connection right there. But let's go ahead and put it in. We have it tucked in there, but we don't want to connect to the stud jet. And I'll show you why, because if we come back here, we need to line it up with this other pipe. So with it tucked in the way that it is, we can come down here. Let's see if I can turn that. There we go. And we can slide that in. There we go. Make that connection like that. That's in there. Now we come back here. And let's see. We can now line it up onto these studs. And then I'm going to hand tighten them on and we'll be back. There we go. Let's get the nuts put on. Okay. Everything is hand tightened here as well. So if we come down here, that's all secure. We have our catalytic converter. We do have our O2 sensor that has to go here. We have the O2 sensor that goes here in the back that remember we took off all the other pipes. So I need to put that in. We have the pipe connected here. If we go back, you can see where the exhaust pipe, the flange connects there. We have this downstream O2 sensor that needs to be plugged in right, right here. Then we have our catalytic converter here. We have our upstream sensor here that has to go in here. And then we have our connection all the way up in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tighten all these bolts up, put all the O2 sensors in, and then we'll be back to put the exhaust clamp on right there once we have everything completely secure. And then uh, we'll put the uh, that last transmission support crossbar in and be done. Everything has been tightened up properly. You can see the O2 sensors in there. We come down here on this side. That O2 sensor has been put back in as well. And if we work our way here onto this other side, looking all the way up in there, those have all been tightened up as well. You can see that O2 sensor is in place. That O2 sensor is also in place. And we've tightened everything all the way down down there 
Next, we just need to come in and put the exhaust clamp right here, and then we'll put that crossbar back in. Exhaust clamp is on, everything is done. So next we're going to install the crossbar that goes underneath the transmission. And then we can drop that blocking. And that goes right into that side. And then we'll take this, this uh, piece of conduit with the electric on it and feed it properly on there, reconnect everything. And then we can start up the vehicle and see how everything is. Here's a side shot. You can see the two catalytic converters, the pipes. You can see the clamp, how everything is running in there. Come here on this side. There it is connecting there. So it's coming together. And you can see also how we have the pipe there on that side going above that, that part where the uh, cross member goes into. That's how it's supposed to run up top. All right, so the last piece now is we're going to take this, this um, transmission mount support. We're going to put that in place, bolt that in, and that'll take care of this whole project. We'll be done with it. We can start the vehicle and check everything. The way that I do it is I like to put one 15 millimeter vertical bolt on the driver's side and then another 15 on the passenger side, tighten those up to hold it in place, then go around, hit it with the other six, and then come back and do the 18 millimeter um, horizontal through bolts that go on each side. And then we'll come in and do the two nuts that go onto the bottom of the transmission mount. So I'm gonna get this in place, we'll get the camera underneath and we'll start moving along with that. Slide it in. And we'll get one of our 15 millimeters. And hopefully the camera will show it, but we'll raise it up. Get it right in like that. Get it in place. Take a 15. Wanna pull. Pull this off to the side. You don't want that getting crimped in. It actually needs to go on this side. And then we can raise this. But you want to make sure that you're lining up. There's, I'll get a close up, but there's three studs that come down from the transmission mount. You want to line those up properly with the holes. You can see them hanging down. And as we bring this up, you can see there how they slide right in the middle like that. And now we'll secure this side in. Everything has been put back on. You can see all of the, the 15 millimeter bolts. If we work our way underneath here, I'll show you. You can see the Two 18 millimeters right there on this side are done. Here on this side, they're also done. Fed that line and connected this downstream O2 sensor. And if we come underneath here, that nut's in place. So is that one. So everything is in place and done. Okay, so... Everything has been put back. Just to recap, just a quick overview. We connected on the bank one, driver's side. We connected the three nuts to the exhaust pipe. On the bank two, passenger side, we did the three on that side. Then we came down, we did the two on the flange that connects to the, the exhaust going through the muffler. We put the exhaust clamp in the middle, got all that secured. Then we came in with that crossbar for the transmission support. We put the two nuts connecting to the support in the middle. We did the four on each side, 15 millimeters going into the frame. And then we did the four, so two on each side, 18 millimeter, the through bolts that go horizontal. All that has been tightened up, torqued properly. So all that is good to go. Let's go ahead and start the car up and see how uh, everything looks.
All right, well, that wraps up this video on how to replace the catalytic converters because this particular vehicle takes two on a Chevy Trailblazer with the 5.3 liter V8. Now, this is the EXT, it's the extended, so it has the longer pipe. But this is a similar process for all the other 5.3 liters. You just need to make sure you order the correct one. But that wraps up this video. I hope that it was informative for you. I hope it helped you out with any projects you're working on. Please send me any questions and comments. I would love to hear from you. As always, I appreciate all the support. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.